Hello, welcome to Embracing the Journey. And just a little side note, if you happen to hear our boys saying mama, dada, whatever, they are awake because they love to be awake at this time, anytime we do Embracing the Journey. So just forewarning, you will probably hear that, but that's okay. That's our life. <laughs> I think some parents can relate to this. Um, they seem to wake up every moment you're awake, right? Yes. Even if I wake up early, they are awake. So they It's like they sense. know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, my name is Whitney. And I'm Todd. And thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, to launch us off today, there was a scream from yes. Oliver. Here we go. Right on cue. Oh, Here we am. <laughs> um, so to launch us off, um, yesterday I had a conversation with Ben Wells. Um, he is a leader in the church we partner with in Romania and a good friend of ours. And I just asked him, I said, from your international perspective, um, he was born in Great Britain and lives in Romania. What, what, are you, what is your perspective on what's happening in America and particularly the church's response? And we were especially talking about just the fight for equality and fight for justice for our black brothers and sisters that's going on. And just also the tragedies when you think about um, just Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and just these tragedies, how do you see the church responding? Just trying to, to learn from him. And he said that one of the things he sees the church doing best is listening, um, educating itself, and giving people opportunities to listen and to educate themselves. And he said if the church keeps doing that, I think they can really be a part of lasting change and healing. Mm -hmm. And it just made me think, like we've talked quite a bit about we choose curiosity over critique. Last week, the title of Embracing the Journey was Listen and Learn. But it made me think this, okay, if we don't cultivate the habit of listening in our everyday lives, how are we gonna listen when we're sitting across the table in what's gonna be probably a tense, at times awkward conversation with someone whose skin is different than ours? And so we realize like, we've just gotta be listeners, period. Mm -hmm. Not just in the big moments, but in our everyday lives. So that's what we wanted to talk about a little bit today is just how do we listen and learn? Yeah, I think too, you can apply that, you know, in your walk with the Lord, you know, how do we listen? Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have those still moments. You have to um, have those times when you are in relationship with him. And, and sometimes when he tells you things, it's a little hurtful or the truth sometimes hurts, but it's good. So how do we apply these same things that we, you know, we're going to talk about these same practical applications yeah. to our daily walk with the Lord. I think it can go full circle and um, I think he can show us more, you yeah. know, in that. So that's really good. And so I just wanted to start with um, James 1 19 and say why I've hesitated to use this verse in this season. But it says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. So I've really hesitated to use this verse because I actually think this is a season to get angry. Like Jesus turned over tables when he was on earth. And if you're not a Jesus follower, message us. We'd love to tell you that story. But he did it because of racist practices. So Jesus established, hey, when racism is going on, let's get angry. And we should be angry about that. But this is talking about, I think in our everyday conversations, so often we want to be heard, but we're not willing to hear. And so we quick to listen, slow to speak. And I think when someone's just being vulnerable and authentic and opening up, we have to be slow to get angry. And maybe we could use this word defensive in that moment. Is there anything you want to add there? Yeah, I think that's so good because I think flesh, our first response is to be become defensive. I think that's a great word of, oh, I didn't do that. Or that's not, I've never done that before. Mm -hmm. But I, it's, it's so important in any situation Again, Romans 12, read it before you go into yeah. any kind of conversation, whether it's sitting you know, across the room from someone who doesn't look like you or it's a friend or whatever, and there's some tension. Yes, just you go humbly, you yeah. know, and, and you, like we talked about last week, and you just sit before them. And I think that's Jesus who can do that for you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, that's great if listening requires that humble approach. That's good. Um, and being slow to anger yes. in that. So. Oh, I think that's awesome. And so just really practically, how can we be good listeners in our everyday lives? A couple things that we try to focus on. Um, one is this, don't think about what you're gonna say while the other person is talking. This is so hard. Last night, Whitney was talking to me and I was like, 
I think I'm going to respond like, no, stop it, stop it, stop it. You know, like, <laughs> but it's so easy for me to be listening to Whitney and instead of really listening, I'm like, well, I need to respond. So I'm thinking this is what I'm going to say because I'm awesome is really the root of it. Pride, <laughs> you know, and, and it's like some of the best listeners I know, I think about Jason Cox, he's slow to respond. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because he's not sitting there going, hmm, here's what I'm going to say. He's actually listening. And yes, that can be awkward at times, but I think it would be very appreciated. And instead of having our own response, I think one of the best things we can do is to restate their remarks sometimes. Mm. And this isn't original with us. These are things that if you study psychology or look at these, these are just things they tell you to do. Um, but just to restate the remarks, to, to give them a chance to go further, to, to make sure that you truly are listening and hearing the heart yeah. of what they're saying. And I think the other thing Whitney's doing right now is like body language. Like, it's really hard to listen if I'm like, oh, go ahead, whip, share this. Or like we often do, and I don't have my phone right now, but okay, talk to me, and I'm just scrolling. Like, what is my body Side language? Side note, if we're doing that in a conversation, and I, I'm, I've got my phone out, Todd just stops talking. <laughs> and I'll say, hey, I can listen and multitask and text. He's like, no, no, I need, I need you to listen. <laughs> it's just, it's so funny to me. So now I try not to have my phone, but... I still do sometimes, <laughs> but yes. Yeah. You still have your phone in the conversation. <laughs> Unless you're taking notes, then that's great. <laughs> yeah. I love it, but it's so true. And body language matters so much. Right. Is there anything, or let me ask you this. Yeah. Who is someone in your life who's a good listener? Yeah, when you asked me that question, I was just trying to think through. And, and to be honest with you, my sister, Ashley, is mm -hmm. very good. Um, she's always been someone that points me to just wisdom when I'm talking about something or having kind of some struggles. But as I was pondering this question, um, I'm thinking back to our conversations. She does just kind of sit there and, and she listens and she is slow to respond. Um, she responds, but it's usually always pointing me in the positive direction. Mm -hmm. And I think that's key to, you know, sometimes in my life, but yeah, I think she does a, a good job and there's many, there's many other people, but you know, off the top of my head, I think she does a really great job. It's awesome. Yeah. And and just like, so you said she's slow to respond. Yeah. So is it ever awkward if you're like, I, I'm just curious. I don't remember. And maybe it's because my sister, it's not awkward. Yeah. Uh, but there are times when I'm like, what does she think about that? <laughs> you know, like, uh, is she, is this a good thing? I don't know, you know, or whatever. But I don't remember it being exactly awkward. But yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> well, and I, you know, part of the reason I asked that is because I think you may be listening and going, if I don't respond, is that awkward? Yeah. Is that deva No, it, you're saying her slow response shows you value. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it does. It shows me that she cares and mm -hmm. she's never usually one to, at least you can sometimes tell when someone, you're talking to someone and they're already thinking what they're going to say because their eyes, their mind is turning, you know, like their eyes aren't looking at you or, <laughs> you know, something like that. So... Mm -hmm. She's, you know, she's not usually like that. She kind of just listens. Now, with kids, it's very hard to find time to just sit and listen. So that is very, that's very few moments now. Yeah. Um, but I think that's an excellent practice to, to learn. And I know I'm really bad about thinking about something else or my mind thinking about this, but what they've sparked has made, had me, like, given me an idea for something else mm -hmm. or, you know, something <laughs> like that. So I'm so guilty of not taking these practical things of listening, you know, um, and, and, and applying those. Yeah. So it's good for me. It's a challenge for me to, to do those. No, that's awesome. Yeah. And I appreciate you sharing that. Cause I think when we really dig in, we all have ways that we've got to work on this. Absolutely. And I think the other side of this then is just learning. And, um, I heard this statement several years ago, like leaders are readers. And I just think mm -hmm. it's so true. And so, for those of us who follow Jesus, um, A, we've got to be reading the Word. Absolutely. Duh, first thing, no questions asked. That yeah. is part of what it means to follow Jesus. Right. But I just, we want to encourage you as well, like, are you reading anything else? Mm. You know, this season there's been so many books that have come out about, hey, if you really want to understand the black perspective, then here's a list. Like, uh, Lecrae had, like, starter kit, intermediate level, advanced. I was like, that is so cool. helpful that yeah. he had that. But let's apply this to every situation as well. Like, I think we miss opportunities to grow yeah. when we don't read. And I'm weird, and I was just thinking about, yes, thank you for agreeing. <laughs> um, okay, if you read five pages a day, 
And that may not be possible every single day, but that's pretty doable. And let's say that the month has 30 days. That'd be 150 pages a month mm-hmm. in a book. That's almost, that's some books yeah. are 150 pages. So I think when we think about reading, we're like, I've got to carve out 45 minutes and I've got kids and I've got a job. And I, then it can just be the little moments. And one of my favorite times to read is when Oliver gets up early and I get to go feed him, I'll just bring my book. And it's a few moments where I'm sitting there and I'm just reading and I could be on my phone or, but it's a chance for me to read yeah. instead of being on my phone. And it's just that little moment in the day that I can read. So just think about how you can educate yourself. I think podcasts come into that. You've, we've been listening to Chris Walker's podcast as he um, sp- speaks with his pastor and then another leader in their church named Lauren. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, just like that's really good. But also I, I don't think there's a substitute for just sitting down with a book. So, anything else? I think it's good. I think our kids are calling. Right on cue. I think that's the (laughs) time that we should end. But, hey, we love you guys. Hopefully this is really helpful just in our practical, everyday lives that we would listen and learn. Love you guys. See you next week. Bye.